Hey folks, how you doing today? It is late May, and that means the last of our application videos that we do with GoHunt is coming up right now. I'm looking at this, I've got all my notes here, I've got my GoHunt up, I've got the Arizona proclamations up. We're talking about Arizona deer, both coos deer and mule deer, along with Arizona bighorn sheep and some of the other like fall turkey and stuff like that. But the ones we focus on are the deer and the sheep applications. And like always, these videos are brought to you by our good friends at Go Hunt. Go there, sign up for Insider. Use promo code Randy. They'll give you a $50 gift card in their gear shop. And they'll have a whole lot more information than what you're going to hear in this short video. So this video is going to sound a lot like the video we did in February or January for elk and pronghorn. Because Arizona has that draw for elk and pronghorn in deadlines early February. Then they have the deer and sheep draw. And then later in the fall in October, they have uh, like javelina and stuff, spring turkey, stuff like that. So this one here, June 14th, 2022 is your deadline. 11.59 p.m. Arizona time. Now don't wait till that last minute. Every time someone waits to the last minute, nothing good happens. Go do it now. Go do it before the deadline. And then you got it done. Everything's taken care of. No worries. So uh, the thing you're going to notice when you look at the Arizona uh, deer application or deer proclamations for this year, just like last year, they cranked down the number of deer tags because of the drought. Well, this year they're cranking them down even further. So. I have zero expectation that I'm going to draw a deer tag in Arizona this year. Maybe I'll luck out and when I walk through how it happens, uh, maybe I'll get lucky, but I, I really don't plan on it because Arizona, like I'd say Nevada and Wyoming are two other states that are really responsive to what the drought and what the landscape is doing. And so they've cut tags and a lot of people want to criticize states when they do this. Uh, I think it's the thing they should do. You know, if, if, if you're like some of the other states, I'll use my home state of Montana, we never cut any tags. I don't know why we even do surveys. It's the same all the time. And so when we have droughts, when we have hard winters, things really go bad. Well, at least in Arizona, they're saying, all right, we're gonna do something about it. We can't control the drought, but we can at least control how hard we, we impact the resource. So. That's the biggest thing you're probably gonna notice this year. I'll get into some other changes for this year, but that's the biggest one. So when you're applying in a state like Arizona, you gotta know what are the upfront costs that are non-refundable and what are the refundable costs and when do you pay for your tag if you're lucky enough to drop. Well, if you've already applied for elk and pronghorn back in January and February, you've already bought the $160 non-resident license. So you've already paid the biggest portion of this sunk cost. You're crazy not to apply for deer and sheep because you never know. When we talk about the bonus point system, maybe this is the year you get the low random number. So you got the $160 non-refundable, non-resident license fee. Then you got $15 per species as an application fee. So those are costs you're never gonna get back. Now for youth, if you go read the regulations for kids, let's see, hunters under 17, 17 and under, uh, the non-resident license is only five bucks. Yeah, be building points for the youth in your house. Uh, so you gotta upfront those fees. Uh, there's always been this thing called point guard where for five bucks, you're kind of buying insurance that for that application for that year, if something came up, scheduling conflict, you know, family work, whatever, you could take kind of advantage of that insurance, that point guard system, and return your tag, get your points restored. You can only do that once per species. Well, now they came out this year where you can buy point guard plus, which for $25 covers all species for three years. So. If you're someone who buys point guard every year for every species, well, you may as well do the $25 version of point guard plus. So if you're lucky enough to be one of those non-residents who draws within that 10% non-resident cap, 
they're going to hit your credit card after the draw or the day of the draw and it's going to show up as $300 for the non-resident deer whether mule deer or coos deer and hope to heavens that you get hit for $1,800 which would be cheap wild sheep like desert bighorn and very few Rocky Mountain bighorn so most people look at Arizona for the desert bighorn now we're going to get into this complicated system but Arizona has a bonus point system so there's two parts to it the very first part of the system they take 20 percent of the tags and everybody goes in this draw for this pool of 20 percent and they go to every hunt code and say all right there's 100 tags we're going to draw 20 of them 20 percent to the people who applied for this with the highest point total so it in effect for those 20 percent of the tags converts the bonus point system to a true preference point system so they go do that, give away, you know, 20% for every hunt code. And anybody who didn't draw then goes to the second part of the draw. And in the second part of the draw, it's for the 80% remaining tags. And it's a true bonus point system where if you have 10 bonus points and I only have two, your probability of drawing is going to be way higher because you end up with more random numbers than I do. So that's kind of the, the way that Arizona converts their bonus points to a preference point in the first 20%. And then all of us unsuccessful people go into the true bonus point draw. And when that's all done, the tags are issued. Now we have this umbrella actually like a big umbrella that no more than 10% of tags can go to non-residents. So once the non-resident quota has been filled for that hunt code, every non-resident, you're out. Now you, you can't get a tag under that hunt code once the 10% cap's been hit. So then they take that 10% cap and they split it into two pieces. They say over here in this first part of the draw for the 20% of the tags, no more than half of the non-resident quota can be absorbed or taken up in the first part of the draw. So that leaves the remaining at least half of it or 5% for the second part of the draw. Well, let's say that only 3% of the non-resident quota has been met in the first part. That leaves possibly up to 7% in the second part of the draw. So we're not guaranteed 10% of the tags. We're capped at a limit of up to 10%. So you got to have, you know, good luck if you're going to draw one of these tags in one of these really high demand hunts. And when you're thinking about the really difficult cheap tags, some of the really difficult deer tags like the Arizona Strip, the Lake Kaibab stuff, there's going to be very, very few tags over here in this first 20% because the total number is so small. So be thinking about that as your strategy. Now, here's the good part about Arizona is they give you two choices. And they look at choice one and choice two before they go on to the next person. So much like I would say Nevada, much like New Mexico, you can use this as part of your strategy. Make your first choice the really difficult swing for the fences one. Because if you get that low random number, you want to make sure that you get the most benefit out of it. So put a really hard one as your first choice. And then put a much easier one that you'd still be happy with as your second choice. So they're going to look at your first two choices if all the tags are already gone, well, too bad. They go on to the next person. If they look at your first choice and it's gone, it's all filled up, or the non-resident quota is met, too bad. They go to your second choice. Well, maybe there is one in your second choice, and you'll get that tag. For non-residents, you can ignore all the other choices, you know, choice three, choice four, whatever. Just don't ever plan on drawing one of those. So, you also have a buy points only option in Arizona, which is going to cost you the same as the application fee. 
And I tell people, why would you just buy points? Unless you absolutely know you have some serious conflict during those season dates, you may as well throw your name in the hat. Buying a point, maybe that's the year you drew the tag. You would have got the low random number. So it's the same price, sunk cost, you know, the upfront $15 out the window, whether you buy a point or whether you apply for some ridiculously difficult hunt. At a minimum, apply for some really difficult hunts. So, uh, Arizona, with this point system, every year you're unsuccessful, you get a point. After five years of applying for any species, five consecutive years, after that, you get what's called a loyalty point. And that loyalty bonus point stays with you so long as you continue to apply for that species. As quick as you miss a year or have a bad application where somehow you're rejected, you would lose that loyalty point. In other words, if you have a, a break in your application for that species, your loyalty point goes away and it'll take you five more years of applying to build that back up. Now, you can get a non-resident hunter education point. Well, even residents can get it. You get a permanent bonus point for taking hunter education. Now, before COVID, you had to go to Arizona, sit through a class for an entire day, do all this stuff, and you had to have taken hunter ed in some other state. Well, with COVID and everything, they said, you know what, this, this just isn't gonna work. So now, you can do it online. For a non-resident, it costs you $300, which some people would say, man, that's gouging me. Well, it's still cheaper than flying or driving to Arizona, getting a hotel room, all that. So this year, I think we're gonna see a huge spike in the number of non-residents who have now acquired that hunter ed point. So you're gonna see a lot of people who last year only had 14 points. Now they've got last year's point that got them to 15 and then they took the hunter ed class so they jumped up to 16. So expect some pretty big jumps in the number of points that people have. So that's new for this year, the, the ability to get that hunter education point. So remember, don't miss a year of either buying a point or applying for a species because you'll lose your loyalty point. And if you can afford it and if you have time, go do the hunter ed point. And I'll use an example. 2017, I draw elk in Arizona. You would think my points would have got reset to zero after drawing, right? Well, my bonus points got reset to zero, but my loyalty points stayed there and my hunter ed points stayed there. So in 2018, I go into the draw with two points, even though I'd just drawn a tag the year before. So that's the benefit of those loyalty and hunter education points. So there's some other big changes in Arizona this year. Uh, Besides the hunter education class I talked about, no more trail cameras for hunting in Arizona. So if you use trail cameras as your scouting tool, better read the rules on that in Arizona. And then the other thing you're gonna see in the mule deer archery tags is they're going to what I will call a harvest quota type system where you can still get the tag, but there's gonna be quotas. And once the quota is met, the season's gonna close within a certain number of days. So read those regulations. They've had to do that because the drought. They've seen what is happening with fawn production. It is just going down and down and down. The other flip side of that, Arizona has an interesting policy where only X percentage of tags, or of harvest, buck harvest, do they want to happen by each weapon type. And with archery, they've been exceeding what they think should be allocated for archery. So that's another reason why they're cranking down on more of a quota system for archery hunts in Arizona. Uh, specifically, these are the archery mule deer hunts. Uh, a lot of you will ask, is there places to hunt in Arizona? Tons of public land in Arizona. 60%, more than 60% of Arizona is public land. And if you add in the state trust lands, you can go hunting there with your hunting license. It gives you a recreation pass to be there hunting. Uh, applications or application age, you gotta be at least 10 years old. 
uh, go, like I said, you get a $5 license if you're a youth and the application cost and everything else is less. So uh, look into that. Hunter education is required for anyone born after January 1, 1966. Uh, when it comes to the sheep units, I, I, I want people to, to understand this, that uh, you, you might not be able to draw every sheep unit. And what I'm saying is that there could be so few tags that when the 20% draw is done, and say there's only one tag, and it, you know someone over here draws that tag, there aren't any remaining random tags to draw. Or maybe there's two of them, and they're both drawn by residents. So there are no remaining tags in the second part of the draw. And so make sure you look at kind of the trends in the history of how many of those tags, whatever hunt code you're applying for, especially for sheep, because there's so few for each hunt code, got taken. And so there's some units where historically it always goes over here in this first 20% draw. So if you have lower than max points, you're wasting an application to even try for one of those. Pay attention to that. Uh, returning a tag in Arizona, um, if you are a parent or a guardian, uh, you can transfer a tag to a minor child who is age 10 to 17 uh, as of the date of the transfer. Um, there's also some nonprofit organizations that help uh, with disabled vets, uh, mobility impaired people, uh, people with life-threatening illnesses, stuff like that. Uh, and if you, he's pretty easy to find, a guy named Tom Wagner, a good friend of mine. He has been a big coordinator of these in Arizona. Uh, if you have a tag you want to get uh, reallocated to one of those nonprofit or, or uh, mobility impaired people, get a hold of me. I'll put you in touch with Tom. Uh, or you can use Point Guard or Point Guard Plus to protect your draw for that year. Uh, some of you are going to say, are there any short-term options in Arizona? Pretty much not. I mean, sheep, I've got, I don't know, 20, <laughs> 20 whatever points, and I plan on going to my grave with my Arizona sheep points. Deer, well, if you look at some of the archery hunts, if you look at some of the easier to draw uh, coos deer hunts, or even the rifle hunts, there are some of those that you can do every four or five years. So there are some, some short-term options. And, and when I say short-term, I'm saying with zero to four points. There's quite a few mid-term options, five to nine points. And if you really want to swing for the fences, you know, you got the Arizona Strip, you got the good late Kaibab hunts, you have some of the late December coos deer rifle hunts, those are going to take you 10 plus points. But maybe that's what you're holding out for. So, uh, Finally, is Arizona worth it? Absolutely. I, I'm a big fan of the value proposition Arizona gives us non-residents. You buy this non-resident license, you apply for some of the best elk hunting. Uh, you hear me say many times, their elk hunting has the best combination of quality and opportunity of any of the Western states, I think. So you already sunk your cost for that. You may as well apply for pronghorn, deer, sheep, all the other things. They have bison, they have turkey, bear, javelina, all that stuff. And if you're like me and you prefer to go down there and hunt small game and birds, you get to do that. So I think that Arizona is worth it. And it might be that one state that I say is, uh, you know, you want to have one long shot, you know, like just dream about sort of place. Maybe Arizona is that place. And you do that with your first choice. But then maybe you throttle it down a little bit and do something a little bit easier to draw with your second choice. So Arizona gives you a ton of options. Their agency is very responsive to managing the species based on what the landscape's telling them. And right now, you know, everybody's like, oh man, the drought is killing us. And you know, for all species, you look at how many antelope tags they cut this year. But Arizona has shown a history that when they went into the really tough drought in 2000, 2001, 2002, they did this same thing, cut tags, cut tags. And then as quick as the moisture came back, they were bouncing tags back up.
So uh, I think they should be commended for that. So anyhow, if you want way more detail than what I provided in this video, go to gohunt.com, sign up for Insider, use promo code Randy, they'll give you $50 in the gear shop. But mostly, you're going to get all kinds of other stuff. You're going to get strategy articles, you're going to get the best draw odds, you're going to, now you get the whole map suite, you get all kinds of stuff. So if that's something that interests you, go there and do that, use promo code Randy, and uh, save some money. But don't miss the deadline. Go do it. Go do it now. Do it today. Do it this weekend. Whatever. Do it tonight. Good luck. Hope you draw.